Here we are going to review some examples on how to determine stresses in various structures. This is the second part of lecture on stress analysis. If you haven't watched the first part, I recommend you to watch that part first, then continue watching this video. The first example is a structure that consists of three elements. The left element is a tube, and the right two elements are solid shafts. The structure is restrained at the left end at A, and it is subjected to four forces at B and C. In this problem, we want to determine how much our stress is in element number one, two, and three. Stress is a force divided by area, so we need to determine force and area in each of these elements. Let's start with determining the forces in each of these segments. In order to determine force, we need to use the concept that we have already learned in statics, which is a free body diagram. In order to draw the free body diagram for the right part, element number three, we need to cut that element somewhere between C and D and take the free part, which is the right part. And then put a known force on the cut section, which we call that F sub three, and also all the external forces, which in this case, there is no external force acting on that part. Then use equilibrium equation to determine how much is the internal force. In this case, it is trivial that internal force F3 is equal to zero. Now let's do the same process for element number two. We are gonna cut that somewhere between B and C, put a known force F2 outward from the cut surface, and show the external forces acting on that element. There are two forces, P2 acting at point C. Some of the forces in the X direction should be equal to zero. In that case, F2 is going to be equal to two multiplied by P sub two. The sign is positive, which means that the internal force is in tension. Now let's do that for element number one. We do the same process. We are going to cut the element somewhere between A and B, put a known force F1 outward from the cut surface, and show all the external forces, which are all four forces that we have in the structure. Some of the forces in the x direction should be equal to zero, with result in F1 is equal to 2 multiplied by P sub 2 minus 2 multiplied by P sub 1. From this process, we can determine how much are the internal forces in each segment. The second step is determining how much is a cross-section area. Segment two and three are solid shafts, which means the area is a circle. So the area of these two sections is pi over four, diameter is squared. Segment one is a tube. In order to determine its area, we need to subtract the area of the inner circle from the area of the outer circle, which gives us pi over 4 external diameter squared minus internal diameter squared. After determining the area for each segment, we can determine stress. And in each of those, stress is simplified as a force over area. Segment 3 is stress-free because there is no internal force in that part. Stress in segment 2 is positive because the internal force is tensile. On the other side, Element number one is being compressed, which means that stress is going to be compressive and it gets negative sign. The second example is a rigid steel bar that is supported by two cables and is carrying a force of P. The diameter of the cables are provided along with their length, and we want to determine how much our stress is in the cables. Similar to the previous problem, the first step is determining the internal force in each of these cables. And in order to do that, we need to use the free body diagram. We need to cut cable one and two and put unknown forces F1 and F2. Then use equilibrium equations in order to determine the forces. The first equation is going to be sum of the moments about C. And in that case, F1 multiplied by its distance to point C, which is A plus B, is going to be equal to force P multiplied by its distance to point C, which in this case is distance B. Then we can solve that for F1 and determine how much is force in that cable. 
In a similar way, in order to determine F2, we use the second equation, which is sum of the forces in the y direction. And from that, we can determine how much is force in the second cable. The second step is determining how much are the cross-section areas of each of these cables. The cross-section area of a cable is a circle. An area is going to be pi over 4 diameter squared, and we can determine those for each of these two cables. And the last part is simply dividing force by the area and then determine how much our stress is. In this case, both cables are going to be positive because both are in tension. The last problem is a hydraulic punch which is pressing the plate with a force of P. The shape of the contact area between the punch and the plate is shown in the figure, and we want to determine how much is the normal stress between the punch and the plate. Similar to the previous problem, we need to determine force and area in order to determine stress. The force in this problem is given, so it is 28 kips, but we need to determine the contact area. The contact area consists of two half a circle and a rectangle. So the area is going to be the area of one full circle plus the area of a rectangle. And in order to determine the stress, we simply divide force over area. In this case, because the force is given in kips and we want to determine stress in PSI, we need to multiply force by a thousand in order to convert that to pound. And the answer is 8140 PSI. Well, this problem looks simple, but there is something that is different from the previous problems. In this case, we are not determining the internal stress in the plate or in the punch, but we are determining stress on the contact area between these two parts. Also, if the force is strong enough to punch the plate and create a hole, other types of stresses will develop within the plate, which we haven't talked about that yet. In the next lecture, we will talk about the different types of stresses and how to calculate them. Now let's wrap up our discussion. In all stress analysis problem, the internal force and the area should be determined in order to determine the amount of stress. The internal force is typically determined using the free body diagram. In order to determine the area, we need to see what area is the force acting on. And once we determine these two parts, we simply divide force over area to determine the stress. Free body diagram is what we have already learned in statics, but let's briefly review that here. Free body diagram is a technique that is used for determining the internal forces in structure. And there are basically three steps. First, we need to cut the structure at the point that we want to determine the internal force. Say in this case, we want to determine how much is the internal force in the blue element. So we need to cut that between A and B. Then put an unknown force outward from the cut surface, along with all external forces that are acting on the free part. Note that in structure with restraint, we need to consider the part which is free of restraints. In this case, the left part of the structure is restrained and the right part is free. So we have to consider the right part, which is the free part of this structure. And the last step is using the equilibrium equation in order to determine the internal force. Generally, in a two-dimensional structure, there are three equations. The same process could be done for making free body diagram for every structure. Like in this case, in order to make the free body diagram, two cables should be cut, and the free body is going to be the bottom part which is free of restraints. Then we will use equilibrium equations in order to determine the unknown forces on the cut sections. Alright, thank you very much, and I will see you on the next lecture.